Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to the channel this week. Hey, I'm really sorry I've been away for about three weeks. i um, been doing a lot of different things around here. Been doing uh, taxes, for one, and uh, working on some new ideas for this channel, so bear with me. And this week, it's all about the X-H2, which is going to be announced next month, and I'm pretty excited about it. I know all you Fuji folks are, but, you know, for me, there's some deal breakers, uh, some things that I... If the camera doesn't have it in it, I'm just not going to buy it. Or I may buy it and then sell it just so I can review the thing. But after the break, we're going to get right to those deal breakers. So here we go. My number one deal breaker for this camera is it really has to have world-class autofocus in it, just like Canon and Sony and, and Nikon. But right now, I just, I, you know, I, there's been so many cameras that have come out. And I've just kept saying, where's the autofocus? Darn it. It's got to be there. Come on, get in there, will you? Start competing. You know, they've got some great lenses that have, you know, quad, like the 90 millimeter F2. It's got a quad linear motor, motor in it. And all the lenses focus really fast. All the newer, all the newer lenses focus great. But the X-T4 just didn't have the oomph. I mean, better performance maybe than the X-T3, but just not there. Um, I shoot a lot of sports, so that's where my complaint is. Um, for instance, my Canon 70 Mark II that I had back in 2018 with this 70 to 200 on it, holy mackerel, that thing focused right on the nose and it even ran a really old 300 2.8, the first version of it. And I was able to get stuff in focus with it, for some reason, this, you know, the, even the newer lineup of, of XT cameras just don't keep up. So that's my number one complaint, and it better have some world class autofocus with it. So Canon has come out with a really interesting um, move the focus point around with your eye. I think that's a great idea. I don't know if, I don't know if Fuji's gonna come out with it. Fujifilm, that's an idea. That's probably patented, so you can't. I don't know. So anyway, that's the first thing. World-class autofocus. Keep up with the other guys, please. Let's get on to number two. This camera, the X-H2, not the X-H1 like this, the X-H2 better have really world-class high ISO performance in RAW. And right now it doesn't. In, oh, I gotta tell you, in JPEG, the camera pushes out a JPEG that's has had noise reduction done to it, and it does a great job of it. I mean, the, the images look great at high ISO, 6400, even 8000. It's not that it's not that bad, but I want to see 6400 raw files with barely any no, noise in it at all. So, Fujifilm, I've hope I hope you've been working on this, and I hope that's one of them. Now, one of the problems with high ISO performance, as you all know because you guys are into this stuff, is, is that when you stuff too many photosites onto a sensor, the noise is really bad. And APS-C size sensors are really prone to this. So if you're gonna come out with a camera that's got 40 megapixels on it, um, <laughs> I don't know how the heck you're gonna stuff that many photosites on there and make the high ISO performance better. Now, that's why full-frame sensor cameras are better at it than the APS-C size cameras like this one. But honestly, if it's innovation, that's great. You know, if they're able to, I, I'm assuming here, I might be wrong, but I'm assuming that this is a Sony sensor just like the rest of the cameras are, um, that if they're able to do that with an X-Trans sensor, more power to them. That would that'd be great. I would be all in with that. So, noiseless at 6400 raw, that's the bottom line for me. So number three is really about my number three deal breaker. And it probably won't be that much of a deal breaker, but for me, I really don't like this grip on this X-H1. It's too deep for me, it's too deep this way. It could be, you know, much smaller, like the X-T4 is great. Um, and I'm not sure if I need this window here, 
um, it's nice to have. You can see at a glance what's going on with the camera, and that's that that really is beneficial. But honestly, uh, this camera is too big. It's too big for me. It's too heavy. Uh, I'd much rather see something in the size of an X-T4, which um, is perfect for me, but it's got another one of my complaints, which I will get back to at the bottom of this list. Um, the other thing I like about this, the X-H1, and I hope that they do it the same with, they did it with the X-T4, is that the back button focus button right here? Um, I would have liked it <laughs> instead of being the AEL button, the autofocus button. The autofocus button here is too far to the right. I, I like it where this one is here. And this one's actually raised more than this one is. So the autofocus button, just like the X-T4, needs to be raised and you know keep it in about the same spot. And so when you're feeling around there with your, with your thumb, you know where it is. Right now, I got it set to the AEL button because it, I can find it. So as you know, one of the reasons for shooting APS-C is the size and the weight. So Fuji got to make it lighter than this. This one in here, I mean, this is this thing weighs the same amount the old DSLRs used to weigh. It's a big camera. It needs to be the X-T4 size. That's my opinion. So one of my deal breakers, maybe it's not that much of a deal breaker, but to me, uh, the Ibis or the Ibis in the X-H2 has got to be smaller than this is here. Um, this will bring the form factor of this camera down a little bit and make it a little bit smaller. Um, the X-T4 has got a, you know, it's got a, a decent size grip and it fits that new battery in it. So as far as I'm concerned, you know, the X-T4, the Ibis and that should be better. It should be, should come a long way towards getting to eight stops of image stabilization like uh, Canon, Sony, and um, um, Nikon. So as far as I'm concerned, the Ibis in this is too big. The X-T4, the Ibis is uh, just about right and it makes the size of the camera just about right. And also, it really, really needs to be smaller. This camera is just too big. So the Ibis in it better have eight stops or close to eight stops of image stabilization in it. So this brings me to the most controversial one. Now, I'm a still shooter mostly. Video for me is just about recording what I'm doing, um, you know, as far as shooting goes, and it's all about stills. I don't, I don't do any videos on on um, shooting video. So to me, a flippy screen, it's a waste of time. I I can't stand the thing. It gets in my way. It folds out here. You can knock it. It it just. I want it just like this XH1 is right here. You know, it goes like this goes like this, and this is the best part. It goes like that too, shooting it vertically like that. It makes a big difference for me as a still shooter. So, Fujifilm, please don't make your top of the line camera have that darn flippy screen in it. So, end of my rant on the flippy screen, which I can't stand. Okay, so let's get to the last thing. And this is probably the most important, by the way, um, Fujifilm X photographers and other photographers they go to to test their beta cameras. Been doing this for six months probably. So quite honestly, um, everything I've said here is a waste of time. <laughs> but you guys know all about the other stuff. The other stuff, you know, the new sensor that's supposed to be in it, backside illuminated uh, stack sensor, great. Um, you know, new processor, supposed to be otherworldly. Um, I don't know. Um, we'll see what happens. And two cameras, one with a Bayer sensor possibly, you know, with at 26 megapixels, the other one with a, an x sensor at 40 megapixels. And how these two cameras are set up, I really don't know. And I don't know why you'd do that. It just doesn't make any sense to me. Make one of them black and white, a monochrome camera. Oh, that would be a great one. I want to see a monochrome X-H2. No, it never happened. So anyway, um, what I wanted to get to was this last point, and that was that Fuji's had a lot of problems with their supply chain. You 70 to 300 people that have wanted to get one by now, I know you don't have one, why? Because Fuji's supply chain is all messed up. Um, I don't know if the, I, don't, I have no idea where this lens is made. I haven't really checked. Uh, if it's China, <laughs> that's a problem. You're not gonna get it. It's Fujifilm. 
do us a favor. Don't announce the top of the line camera if you can't deliver it. Now, they usually wait a couple of months and then drop it to be sold. And they, they offer it up for pre-sale and all that. And I'm gonna be one of the first guys on that list at B&H to, to get that camera right away. Am I gonna get it right away? Probably not. I'm really concerned with Fujifilm telling us they're gonna deliver a camera and not do it. So you better have that straight. It's really poor business practice not to have that straightened away before you announce a camera like this. Now, if you say in your summit, we're announcing this camera today, but it's not gonna be available until February. Well, if you say it's gonna be available in February, it better be available in February. I know that when I ordered my 7300 pre-order, I got it as soon as it, it got dropped in the market, but within, you know, like two weeks, hmm, never again. <laughs> well, I'm sorry to laugh about that, but that be the case. That's it for this week, and I hope that you will like this video and maybe give me a like. That would be great. Hit the like button and uh, comment, and let me know what you think about the new X-H2. This is an X-H1. Um, let me know what you think the X-H2 should have on it and what would be a deal breaker for you. And subscribe to the channel. That would be really awesome. And, you know, you can share this, too. It would be nice if you shared it around. All your folks and friends that shoot Fuji at camera clubs, why don't you send them the link? So, remember, it's not what you photograph, it's how you photograph it. And that's it for this week, and we'll catch you next time.